Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. We've got uh, some German wine. So here's the thing. Some Psalms, sommeliers, they freaking love Riesling. I haven't gotten on the bandwagon about Riesling. I know, kill me now. Kill me now. Um, I like Riesling. I just, I just don't get it, I guess. I don't get why it's so great. I, I do like the varietal. So, anyway. So, I bought some wine yesterday. And, uh, I decided I want to start off with this. We're getting kind of, it's first day of spring officially. Uh, even though this is Friday's episode, I'm recording this on Tuesday. This is first day of spring. A nice spring uh, wine. And I went ahead and bought something that's kind of a, a well-known, fairly, fairly well-known brand. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll get right into at least the brand, then we'll kind of go in a little bit about Riesling. Uh, this is the uh, Lucen Brothers uh, Dr. L 2010 uh, Riesling from the Mosul. Now, a uh, few things real quick. I bought it at World Market for $11.99. Okay, so got that information out of the way. So let's talk about Riesling, Germany, uh, all this other stuff real quick. First of all, I'll probably have a little map up here about uh, the Mosul and where this is. Uh, the Lucen, um, Dr. Lucen website has some really nice pictures. I'm lifting those, so hopefully you're not going to yell at me for using your pictures. But uh, some nice pictures, or at least a picture of, of where things are, and a nice little old map that uh, kind of you can kind of uh, see what's going on. But um, they're near the uh, town called Burncastle, uh, and uh, <clears throat> this is a um, an area of um, Germany that, uh, well, pretty much Riesling is the grape in uh, Germany, and it's it's just a matter of like they're so well known for it. they 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 do um, they do make other wines or gra wines from other grapes there, but it's it's just not the same. Um, it's just not the same, uh, uh, I guess, quality or, or, or notoriety as they do with, um, uh, what should I call it, with Riesling. I'm like looking stuff up at the same time. So let's, let's talk about it. Riesling, uh, it's a white grape. And uh, it's, uh, it, it can grow in many climates, but it, it does particularly well in Germany. Uh, with Germany being near the 50th parallel, that's kind of the the northernmost reaches of what people consider being able to grow quality wine grapes. Yes, you've got some people growing wine grapes in England and some other places, and yes, you've got the whole climate change thing, so things are a little bit maybe warmer. Didn't mean to hit that. Maybe a little bit warmer, a little bit farther north, uh, certain times of the year, but in general, the 50th parallel is, is about the, the limit of being able to grow wine grapes and make actually decent wine out of it um, and it's been that way for a long time so yes there's this climate change stuff going on um, or lots of talk of climate change I'm not going to get into that huge debate because um, many people think there's no debate and other people think there's a huge debate and whatever but I'm not going to get into that part just just suffice to say that um, the 50th parallel has pretty much been the, the limit for quite a while um, Anyway, so uh, what makes um, this area, especially in, in this part of Germany, not just the Mosul, but you know, it's, it was also called the Mosul Tsar Ruhr, um, but now it's just Mosul. Um, but uh, the thing with, with growing grapes here in Germany is the, the rivers, and this is kind of like where you, if you like, go to the Finger Lake region in New York, um, the bodies of water retain the heat from the day so they keep things a little bit warmer at night so it, does, so it doesn't get too cold at night 
for the grapes. Um, the other thing is that they have very steep, they have very steep hills. Um, so that helps with the angle to the sun. So again, it helps with, um, with getting as much sunlight as possible, you know, as many hours of sunlight as possible per day for these grapes. When you're in a place like Texas, you don't necessarily need elevation. Uh, even in Bordeaux, there weren't a lot of hills. I mean, there's hills in the Bordeaux area, but you know, it's one of those things where you know it's it's mostly flat as far as where the um, where the grapes are being grown. So um, elevation isn't as is important, or or the angle isn't as important as it is, say, in Germany. Um, so the angle helps with the with the angle to the sun, uh, and then also the the soil. Um, they have a lot of slate in this area and the slate retains the heat so at night it keeps the grapes from getting too cold. So these are all like kind of great things that help this particular part of the world able to grow quality grapes uh, so far north. Riesling is the main grape. They also make some Pinot Noir. Um, uh, they don't call it Pinot Noir, they call it... Uh, I just had the name off the top of my head. Um, uh, 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 Burgunder. Um, dang it, now I gotta look it up. I should have thought about this ahead of time, but you know, it, it's Blau Pergun Blaut Burgunder. Dang it, I, I know it, and I'm really mad that I can't figure out, you know, what, uh, what it is off the top of my head. Uh, da, 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 da. Spot Burgunder. I can't believe it took me that long to figure that out. Spot Burgunder. All right. Anyway, Burgundy, Burgunder. So, um, a little brief history of, of that. Dr. Lucen is uh, one of the top producers, one of the most well-known producers. Been doing it for a long time. And uh, uh, the doctor thing has to do with. Uh, I don't remember the exact story, but there was a story about the wines from this area um, having healing benefits and doctor has you know d-o-k-t-o-r i think it is um, has to do with with uh, the wine itself being uh, a tonic not that there's a doctor lucin that created this i mean but you know they they use the word doctor a lot for for these things so doctor doctor lucin is not the only one wow it's already been seven minutes haven't even sip the wine yet. All right, so let's get into the wine. Um, for those of you playing the playing the home game, uh, let's see, we got that full screen. No one's watching right now, but I am broadcasting at Justin TV. So I like it, like I've done in the past. I try to broadcast these things live. Um, Justin TV, I found is pretty pretty darn good right now. Um, I can broadcast in HD without paying an exorbitant amount of money like you have to do with, um, what's that other thing, uh, Ustream? Yeah. Ustream, you can only do like this really low quality, crappy, standard def-ish, whatever. All right, so got some high stream, high quality, uh, high def stream going on, and um, yeah, let's get some wine tasted. All right, so nice color here, golden color. Uh, let's get to the bouquet. Mostly floral for me. I don't get any, or I get very, very little citrus or fruit flavors or fruit, ar fruit aromas. I'm trying not to sniff too hard. I'd say, I'd say I had some nasal nasal issues earlier today, and I don't want those to be repeating. It'll be bad, okay. I see mostly floral notes, uh, very little, very little fruit or citrus, and that's about it. Hmm. Let's try it again. All right, 
slightly sweet, not hugely sweet. It's very tasty. Um, pretty good balance. Uh, not a huge amount of acid, but you know, a little bit of acid there. Um, not very, very high acids, put it that way. Um, a little bit of residual sugar. Um, thing about Riesling is that, um, or German wines in general, you'll have all these ripeness levels. Now this does not have a ripeness level on it, uh, at least nowhere on here. It's just as a quality wine, uh, uh, Qualitatswein, and uh, you know it's from the Mosul area and from Burncastle. But other than that, they they get the grapes from here. They actually source these grapes. They don't. These are these are not estate grown estate grown grapes. They have some, and those get to be in the Pradikat or the um, quality or the higher quality wine level. Uh, the Pradikat uh, designations of like Auslese, Spätlese, Cabernet, uh, Baron Auslese, Trocken Baron Auslese. I mean, they, they, they do the whole gamut, Iced Vine, all that stuff. Um, so they, if you go to the website, which I've got a link below to, uh, you can see all that and all the um, uh, Erstatz, what's it, the, um, oh, hold on, so I can give you the, um, uh, the German word for this, but basically like a Grand Cru and um, uh, Erstelaga, that's it, Erstelaga. Um, so they have wines from each of these like kind of Grand Cru, like the, like the equivalent of Burgundy. So you have like these individual vineyards or, the, or plots of land is actually what it is, not just a vineyard, but a plot of land that's a certain quality uh, or named. So they have a whole bunch of that. This is kind of like their entry level. So um, it's not overly sweet. Um, there is there is one flavor to it. I don't know. It's I, I kept wanting to say it was like this plastic quality too, but not really. But it's definitely a um, entry level. It's tasty. Um, it will taste even better if it was chilled a little bit. Uh, this is a good wine to kind of get into the spring. You've got the floral notes really also on the palate. Um, a little bit of citrus type of stuff. Um, lemon lime type of refreshing. It's a very refreshing wine. These are wines that are that are uh, people really like. It's also not very very sweet, which is my, what I like out of this wine. Particularly, it's not that sickly sweet wine. Uh, it's good acid, uh, not heavy, heavy acid, not high, high acid, but I'd say about moderate acid. Um, my, my mouth is watering, so this would be really you know, a nice refreshing glass of wine. Um, do I like it? Yeah. But, you know, afterwards, now that, now that the, the palate has, or is starting to develop, and now I haven't had much, and I'm breathing out through my nose, I'm getting that kind of synthetic type of uh, taste. I almost feel like, you know, like this is, th these are all wood corks or cork corks. Um, this was a screw top, by the way, but it feels like, like maybe I'm having that synthetic plastic type of um, quality to it. And that's the only little of a turn off to me. I mean, I would have been giving this probably more closer to an 89, but that little, that little back end with the that plastic type of or synthetic type of um, quality kind of drops it a few points for me. I'm going to give this wine an 86. Uh, I think it's a well-made wine. It's just that little bit at the end. If I was just drinking and eating and, and, and not really paying attention, I probably wouldn't notice it. But um, 86, I'll knock a couple points. Uh, pretty good. I'd say go out and uh, check it out if you can. Uh, this should be fairly widely available. I mean, like I said, it's a pretty well-known brand and um, should be about 12 bucks no matter where you go. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, there was something I wanted to talk about. Don't remember. Oh, right. I'll do it on the next show. I forgot the one thing. The Century Club. I'm a member of it. I got my little thing in the mail. Uh, I forgot to put bring the um, certificate down, so I'll do that when, uh, when I do the next episodes. That'll be Monday's show. Uh, other than that, click the links up above uh, to friend me up. Hit the donate button. Hit the links down below as far as uh, Dr. Lowson. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.